I'm very happy to be able to introduce uh, Dr. No Sung Young. Uh, no Sung comes to us as the, uh, I think he has it up here, the Bernard Keating Crawford Endowed Professor at the University of Notre Dame. Um, he's a product of the University of California system, receiving his bachelor's, master's, and PhD from UCLA, after which time he did uh, stand at Jet Propulsion Lab before going out to the Inland Empire and you actually know the Inland Yes, I know the Inland Empire. <laughs> and uh, and I know of all the smog in Riverside as well. And uh, he quickly ran through the ranks from uh, assistant to associate to the full professor in very short order and uh, decided during the pandemic in May of 2020 that that was a good time to move the family to uh, South Bend, uh, Indiana. Um, I don't think No Song has any... Um, uh, hobbies, and I don't know how he could because he averages well north of 10 publications a year over his full career. Um, last count was 381 pubs. There's probably like five more coming out in an hour or two um, with an H index of 68. So I just, like I said, I, he can't have time to do anything else. Um, the connection with Monell occurred um, at a uh, NSF workshop in October of 2022. Um, both No Song and I were um, participating in that, not knowing anything about each other. Um, but that was something that Nancy um, was part of the organizing committee. And shortly after that, I think No Song um, uh, contacted Nancy and asked if there would be any potential interaction at Monell. She connected him up with me, and the rest is history, of course. Um, we submitted a uh, NSF uh, convergence accelerator proposal in June, and in November, we were informed we were in administrative review, and we believe uh, we've been told to report to the indoctrination meeting in the end of this month, but we haven't received an award letter yet. So we think it's been awarded, but we don't know for sure. And I think some of what he's going to talk about will be quite pertinent to, to our joint collaboration. And so it's really nice to have you here, Noso. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody. Uh, it's actually nice to come and visit colleague Bruce and also visit. Actually, you know what? Actually, I sent my student to the Monell a couple of years ago when I was doing the NSF uh, ICO project to interview what is the sensor, uh, you know, technology requirement. That that time, I think three of my students visit Monell and have an interview with some of you. So. Thank you for allowing me to actually have my student to get exposed to different side of it. Because as you can imagine, I'm coming from chemical and biomolecular engineering. So chemical biomolecular engineering. So I'm engineer as a training and I have a completely different perspective what problem. And one of the biggest problem with the engineering is that they like to solve the problem, make it problem very complicated, right? And then working on something that is a level. Uh, level. But by having collaboration, it's very important to figure out what is a truly need. And I think one of the, the aspects of NSF Converger and Accelerator project is just exactly that, working with the people who are using and understanding. Therefore, we can advance the field. Uh, one other thing I do, I like to, and as a faculty member for a little more than 20 some odd years, I like to talk and I forgot to acknowledge people. So uh, before I getting into talking about science, I like to acknowledge the people who actually do the work other than talking. So throughout the 20 or so, I had a wonderful time of having different people involved and particularly there's a large range of students. You know, again, only, the, you know, there's a couple of students who got married while in my group and then they have a kid. And I think there's one of picture showing that her, a kid at holding that was actually coming from my group. They got married and then I, it is now in junior high, so it's a, it's a life changing. And you know, I had a wonderful opportunity to work with all those people. Moving from where I did uh, 17 years of my career at UC Riverside down to moving to the Notre Dame. As what group pointed out, yeah, I had a, that wonderful time of moving the lab and people and all in during the COVID time. And by the way, I did, did not decide to move during the COVID time. I got I was asked, I decided to move it two years of advance then that time. Actually. So again, to support those people, somebody need to pay the bill. And here are the group of people who help us out to continue developing uh, the technology range from different sources. And hopefully 
we can now add another next recipe part of it. And then this is a true opportunity for me to actually talk to you guys and talk from the different side of it and putting a convergent work together to advance this. Okay, so what I'd like to walk you through, I know I'm just gonna walk very broadly instead of going to a single component of the work, but I'd like to just talk you through what technology, what's the engineer perspective of this electronic nodes are. Right, um, introducing both uh, nano and microstructure in the sensor, introduce electronic nodes. Then, you know, to make a device, you need to overcome multiple hurdles. And one of the hurdles is the scalable manufacturing of sensor, developing sensing material, editing uh, to make a sensor reliably. And then also conduct that you can reliably test multiple times by doing the testing. And then as an engineer, I like to need to show the people that here's actually a gadget that if you made it, and uh, it's a called sensor prototyping. It had to be low cost. And the, 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 again, typical funding agency that I'm going after these days, uh, the uh, Department of Defense, so that they like to see a gadget. The end product has to be gadget. And then again, based by providing all this, then you have to have a lot of data set. And then I am not an expert of data, but also be trying to gather the information and do a different type of machine learning algorithm to identify and quantify the problem. And that is enabled because we have a high, a uh, large number of the data. And then I'm gonna end it up with the application and they're getting knowledge So if you look at what happened in late 1990, those who have been around from now on is everything has been happening as a miniaturization of the device. This is a prime example of miniaturization. Think about the pressure gauge. You know how small a pressure gauge now you can make it? Um, two millimeter, millimeter by milliliter, or two millimeter by two milliliter. Think about your phone. It has a speaker. Can you see a speaker in here? No, you cannot. Speaker is that small micro, uh, microphone device actually innovated by two millimeter by two millimeter. So technology has been advancing down into the making everything small, but have the same functionality. So what that allow you to do is that integrate everything into the very miniaturized device and you can get all the information. So that call called MAN, you know, whether you thought, this is my era when I was, uh, you know, just finishing our PhD, 1990, everything was MAN, microelectromechanical system, mimicking the microelectron, making the mechanical device that's small enough that actually to work as an electron. So what that allowed to, when you make everything smaller, the reason everybody make it smaller means is they want to make it cheaper. Okay, so it's not so as you reduce the dimension, price drop, 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 drop. Such way is not disposable to the level that what people are thinking is they want to put RFID tag. So again, one of the prime example when you have a clothes, there is a tag that you don't have a beeping sound when you go off, so you cannot sit. There's RFID tag in it. There's a sensor in it. Now you can be disposed, but then you cut out the price tag, then price tag goes away. And what that allows to is basically miniaturizing sensor that in the, that rock. And that become one of the technology of the when that changed the world. Okay. When you make it smaller, then I guess one of the things is that we are doing is so when we get a device more and more, everybody wants to know your surrounding information. And then you understanding what the process is going around you, then you can control. Range from the smart home, human, you know, that industry 4.0 and automotive. Everything became automated device with the, you know, to do that, you need a sensor, right? To understanding the surround. Okay, so, what the technology has been moving forward is that everybody are moving forward to mimicking the human. Okay, so this is one of the example of showing how people have been changing, providing the technology to mimic human from the range. And mostly the point that I want to point out, the thing that they want to now, uh, think the technology like to do is mimic the five cent. Okay, so, I like to give always example to students that think about your phone, right? So what do your phone have? Can you hear us? Right? 
He can hear us. He can speak to us. Right? He can hear. He can see. He has a camera. He can touch. Right? What two sets are missing? I'm talking to the wrong one. <laughs> oh, damn, this one to my channel. Oh, what sense is missing in your smartphone? Taste and smell. So the two missing are, if you can bring taste and smell to your phone, what have you just made? What have you just made? Now, by the way, your phone has what? Brain, right? Can process the data. What is missing? What can you make? If you put the leg and arm, what do you do? You, what do you make? You made a human. So that's the engineer perspective of dream. Can I make a human? So far, he has a brain. He can touch. He can hear. He can speak. Only missing two parts is I'm very sure that's one of the things Monel likes to do and I like to do before I retire. I prove that I talk about, okay, I have a 15 year birth. I don't know how many years he's going to go. As long as we continue to fund it, we're going to work on it until we get it. But if he can bring the taste and smell to the world in the ministry format, then he changed over. Okay, so, you know, if someone asked me, why did you move to Notre Dame? That was one of the, I have a little more than half. Half of my career is over. And I have another half more to go, or a little less than half. That's what the problem of the back end. That's the one project. It's very engineering practice and difficult, but I like to do it. Okay. I don't want to bore with you guys basically how to know this work. But in concept, I can mimic that electronically. First step, I have a brain, right? We have a brain. I don't need to worry about brain. I don't need to worry about transformation and information, right? There's a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, I can integrate it. So only thing I need to uh, focusing on is developing sensor array. That brings some kind of electrical signal. Electrical signal, so what if the respond or factor respond, same logically transmits it into some kind of electrical signal and electrical signal is transmitted through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth that to, so that your brain can actually analyze the data. Okay, so my group focusing us is here. How can I mimic that? How can I create? I don't have to vote with you guys, right? How many different type of factories in the human or how many red? Uh, to engineer perspective, that's not a lot. Okay, 400,000 is not a lot because when you look at your microprocessor, CPU, that's a billions of tens of billion transistor in it to do the process, right? When I look at the sensor, it's a transistor. I don't know, those who knows, they're called chemical chem -fed, chemical field effect transistor. The same. Think of an image sensor, right? What's the array of image sensor? 10, 1020 by 1020? Okay, 1040 by 1040, 10 to the uh, 6 or 10 to the 7. That's what microprocess people does. But developing 400 or 1,000 should not be a big issue. Okay? I want to have you guys to understand that. Okay? Then, the biggest challenging is that how to come up with a different factory that's a different response. What engineering tool set do I have that actually can have generate different signal when they expose to different animal? So the way that I have to look at it is that I got to create a sense of diversity. I got to create a different sensor with a different, first, it had to be sensitive, very sensitive, but also have a different sensitivity towards different animals. And how we do it is that here's a variation, okay? The tool that, that I had is control the method of detection, <laughs> control the structure of device, control the transduction mechanism, where I'm looking at the change in color, or am I looking at the change in electrical property, or changing of material. Most significantly, changing of material meaning you're changing olfactory receptor. Okay? So, give you an example, like methodology. We can do electrical measurement, registered, you know, simply changing a registered measurement chain, or we can make a capacitor chain, we can make an impedance chain, all different aspects. 
we can also do, do it as in structurally, you can actually make a different material. When they're making different material, they have a different atrogen resorption kinetic, interreactive with the anode. And that you can signal the change of atrogen desorption is transmitting to the electrical signal is the cause. Okay? You can change the shape. You can make a material that is particle, you can make a rod, or you can make a sheet, nano sheet, it all changes the different response. You make the structure that is heterogeneous. Meaning you put the different catalysts in specific location that alter the electron transport property that can mimic a different component. When you add all those up, right, you can actually go to 10 to 21 variation of sensing. So the target is 1,000. Yeah, we can get 1,000 different variations. No problem. So, well, somebody got to work on this. My graduate student got to work on But room is there to do actual variation to tune it. Okay, and that's the sort of thing that I was fascinated about. This is something that I can work for 30 years of my life. I, by the way, I only work for 20 years. I can work for some other 10 years. Not a problem. Okay, so going down to actually device, those are all timer. Uh, remember the fuse when we were young? I don't know. Those are all young, old people. Everybody remember fuse, right? There's a wire, there's an electro. And depending on one kind of resistance chain, can we resist the sensor? It's the same concept. When the molecule binds down to the surface of the fuse, the electrical property of resistance of this device change. And only way you can detect the change is called semiconducting material property. I'm not going to go with what they are. That's a transistor. That's how they actually all the electronic work. Upon the bind, so that it's called chemical trend of chemfed or chemical uh, fat. Chemfed is because chemical interaction translating to electrical property. Okay, so when you look at the structure, I said here, okay, so that top line is showing how binding of event, something that there's also depending on target analyte, something is reducing analyte, something is oxidizing analyte, all the VOC. It's oxidizing, right? Of uh, reducing gas, right? And then there's oxidizing. So when the binding molecule then change the property. When you look at the structural configuration, you can actually vary all this variation of material. For example, uh, I asked my student to label the number one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all the number of different material you can vary to change the thing, right? So want to represent two electro like fuse, electro. Here's a sensing material three, four. And then there's a, you put something on the top, five. You put the layer on the top of first selected layer. They create a com uh, combination. Also resulting in, when you look at uh, alphabet A, B, C, D, that's inter. Okay, reaction or chemical phenomena is the interface reaction. You need to control the and knowing control interface, you can get differences. So we actually do that. And by doing that, you can actually create an array. If you can variation of that, so example on the top, that's actually our device, 20 by 20 array. That's 400 different sensor in a single device. By combination of this variation, and you prototype the device so that it can be a couple cents. By the way, we made it down to the uh, 10 cents. A single sensor, so it's less. So another important thing is engineering perspective that we need to start thinking through really going to prototyping and device. It is very complex structure. Complex the team member. I mean, this is a, one of the, this was from other diagram, but I think we made a similar pro diagram for uh, conversion X-ray that is that this is a, is a rotation, you know, you got to do a, Cyclic work together as a team to advance it. So again, of course, I'll, I'm the, on the left hand side. I'll, you know, you know, to make a sensor, you need to do a variation first. You gotta make a that sensing material that has a different combination. You gotta actually create those. You gotta actually put them into the sensor. They call additive manufacturing. Then you gotta go through hydrogen testing to gather the information. What good? What bad? After that, you actually do a data analytics to figure out, can I come up with the right combination to selectively identify ketone group separate from the alcohol group from the aldehyde group? 
right? And then do that cycle. Once you have the right combination, you got to actually develop a prototype gadget that is flexible enough so that you can actually do integration so that you can get a more data set. And then to use the people to the going to the field, somebody got to use a software engineering development so that the development has to be made so that if you need to use it, you got to be called another term that I like to do, you know, convert an extra consumer factor engineering so that user can actually use it and the field demonstrate. And this is the same cycle is needed to implement the, the material discovery all the way into device in the field. And that's sort of the design that Bruce and I and Dick are trying to, you know, do this time is go all the way in, right? Not only stopping at I made of this nice sensing material, but we implemented the field and they are something that people can use. I know it's, it's very daunting time. Trust me, I, you know, it's not easy, but it's fun project to work on. And that's what I say. It, it, if I look at the PI perspective, this is not a project I want to leave. It's too complex. There are too many holes. However, as a, just a researcher, this is very interesting project to progress because you know what? This, I have one time that I can actually do this stuff. Okay. So first step is making nanomaterial. That gets sent to a PPB level, parts per billion level detection. Okay, there are a variety of different sensing material out there. Everything is pro and con and pro and con. Good and bad, good and bad, good and bad. Right? Most of conventional low cost sensor system is metal also metal oxide, semiconductor, semiconducting metal oxide range from bother because it is very sensitive. You can actually detect very nicely. But again, the problem is uh, there, are, you know, you have to operate high temperature, but also it has a, it's, uh, it's moderately selective, good and bad. Eno side of it, that's fine because we're going to just collect a bunch of the data so that we can, the moderate selective can overcome. However, there's a good and bad outside. So not only that, as I pointed out, another important side is that you can modulate the material. Second modulate the morphology. Okay, you can make it from nanoparticle to nano right to nano sheet. Everything has a pro and con. Okay, you call zero dimensional nanoparticle, one dimensional nano rod, and two dimensional nano sheet. By the way, the nanotechnology that actually help us out moving into this direction and improve sensing performance is that cost is a material property or the property is no longer depending on composition. You can control that by controlling the dimension. Okay, prime example is you know you have to look at the stained glass in the you know Catholic church. You see there's stained glass with a different color. There are gold and silver nanoparticle in it, and the color change because of the size of size of the gold. It's the same gold. Well, gold can be pink, gold can be blue, silver can be blue. So that's what their technology, and somebody asked me about what is different from 20 years ago. That's one of those. By tuning the morphology, not the problem. Okay, so this is one of the, the you know, the, the review paper we brought and actually showed it what we can do, especially one dimensional nanostructure to create this high density array. There's a bunch of things we can do. We can make a wire to two. Okay, we can make, nanoparticle or gold, you know, decorated nanostructure. We can make grain size variation. We can make head junction, and we can anchor different. What that's just telling you, I don't want to bore with you, is that allows you to do this diverse set of data sets like the thing to put me down to the PD. Okay, so again, scientifically, there's a, there's a reason why we are controlling electron transport power. Okay, there's a whole barrier height that you can vary the very high ratio to grain size. Then you can actually control as of ion that ion oxygen as up to the surface can ionize the three different forms. And then by controlling the morphology dimension, you can prove the size. Okay, another way to do it is actually when you decorate it, again, I don't want to go too long, is that you actually call chemical sensitizing effect or electrosensitizing effect also the send electrical property of the device when you put some material. 
Okay, and that change depending on size and shape and dimension, all by tuning that your performance change. And there's optimum size, optimum dimension that can lower the sensitivity down. We just published that in great uh, sensitivity. It's exactly gold nanoparticle that created the complete trioxide and the platinum. Okay, then first step is then to because there's a lot of things that we gotta make, you gotta come up with the manufacturing. I mean, that's my team is really good at because the technique that we use to create this one dimensional nanostructure is called electro spinning. I'm very sure nobody heard what is electro spinning. Okay, everybody know Spider Man? How does the Spider Man work? But the web coming out from your hand, right? Electro spinning is somewhat the same. You have a needle, you push, you apply the electric field, and the Taylor conform and wire comes out. You collect. Okay. And by, by there are many variables that you can control it. The good thing is whatever you put in it, what it comes out. So you can create a noble nanostructure, right? And calcination process. And here's the scalability. One thing I liked about it is that nano spider is that you can make a sheet out of it. So when you look into it, that 30 nanometer, 20 nanometer nanofiber, but you have a pot. That's the manufacturability. We do make all that. Okay. And that's actually clock that my student made. And with the another important thing, when you look at it, look at the morphology variation. I mean, that's why my team is actually expert at doing that. Not, not sense. This is it. Okay. And again, the, because of the scalability, now students can make this array. So look at the matrix, right? You have different type of, you know, there's a, you know, metal oxide that pulls, tin oxide, tungsten trioxide, and here's a variation of different dopant. And when you look at it, it's, it's all noble metal. Gold, platinum, silver, palladium, you can make a junction and you make a array. And you have now variation of what? Two, six, two, four, six, eight, nine, nine by four variation. Sensing material, you synthesize it, you're gonna make it every day, one material at a time, make a gram or so. And then when you look at the TF, this is what I love. Okay, you can actually see this is nanofiber. When you look at the scale, oh, that's roughly around 30 nanometer, 40 nanometer nanofiber multi-poly crystalline. And guess what? It is gold decorated. And you see this yellow dot that's specifically located inside the gold down to 20 or 30 nanometer. Then you have that tunability. And you can I can control this the way I want it down to be uh, one nanometer, two nanometer, down to tens of nanometers. Oh. Right, and here is a student fabricator wreck, and this is actually a real an optical image of John that he made it. He graduated by it. less than four years, so I think it was we have a methodology of making all these things in that time. And what do you do is then after that is either for testing and control. The one thing to highlight is the ability to dig down to lower level. Right, it's hard to see is that, but the the dotted line is actually a concentration. This is the hydrogen sulfide sensing. The hydrogen sulfide run an X map, right? That older smell is around PPB. And then we just published a workshop that we can experiment with this one PPB by tuning the mobile dimension of it. And then here's the calibration. Okay. So gold decorated on the structure give you a much better sensing performance. Again, so again, it is sensing performance depending on target. And then again, you expose a different analyte and specifically point it out. This material is very good for hydrogen sulfide, right? Down to one ppm, not other analyte, right? And then by doing this, so that you can actually pipe, you can change the material, you have a different shape of the curve of response. Okay. And then after all this, again, this is the analytical reporting of sensing material. But once we have this sent to data scientists, then they can decompose this idea even much better to quantitatively and qualitative point of what analyze what target analyze we are going at. So that was a prior. You can make a coral sheet. You can make a nano sheet. This is zinc oxide. You can actually drill the hole. If you look at hole here, is actually, can you see the hole? This is 
This is around 20 nanometer thick sheet of zinc oxide with the porous structure. So we call the porous zinc side that we can control surface area. We can also say the control the thickness and dimension by calcinating. So this is my group does a lot. They make different material. And then depending on that, you can call balance, the oxygen balance side, it's alter, not only surface area, that alter the sensing. So that's another tool capability. And then basically if you start showing there's a different scene. By simply changing the morphology, made the same material, but by tuning the morphology and dimension, you can pull, tune the sensing performance. Okay. And last thing that I'm going to show you about material size, and then I have one postdoc who are coming from other group decide, Dr. Myung, I'd like to try this uh, colorful clay. Do you think we should use that as a sensor? I said, so what is it? Oh, this is called polyosilicate. It's a clay, you know, the clay, color clay. But when you look at the structure, it's a very unique structure. It is actually a layer-like structure that consists of octahedral and tetragonal sites. One has a metal oxide, the other one is the silicon and an octahedral side. When you uh, edge of octahedral is the metal oxide, M represented metal, where that uh, edge component is a silicate tetrahedral in the middle. That structure can be made a self assembled to be one layer by layer. So metal oxide hydride with the silicon or it has a two, one, one to one or two to one. This is very uniquely ordered the chemical structure, right? And then you have you can play a lot of ground in within this structure. You can do a lot of called cation substitution. You can substitute the metal, where to avoid silicon side you can substitute with the gallium, aluminum, iron, and titanium. Whenever you substitute something, the property change. Okay. You can actually put something in between the layer, it's called interspace layer with all this metal. And uh, actually uh, the side of the metal side, you can actually substitute different cation from iron to iron with the different valence state, cobalt, uh, nickel, manganese, manganese, aluminum, zinc, and gallium. So there's so many playgrounds that you can do that allow you to tune the composition and quality that effect. Okay, And that alter the chemical interreaction. When you change the chemical alteration, you can actually also change the morphology. What I mean is that you can actually make a sheet-like structure to be tube-like structure. So if you remember, you know, the big about the quantum dot, right? C60 carbon dot to be a carbon nanotube. And then there's a graphene that the people got a work for graphene and the, the C60. You can play same kind of morphology variation in the clay, but you can tune the composition where that the carbon structure is made of carbon. That's it. Okay, so good thing is material center is relatively easy, and again, through the made of colorful clay. So we see a different color, and color change depending on composition. Allow that again that you can make a sheet like structure. We confirm. I'm not going to bore with you what this whole image looks like. Then again, that alter the electrical property. It's called band gap, which is in conductor. We show that, and then here it is as you did. Okay, so particularly thing, the thing about polyosilicate is that called interlayer spacing where they go after the aromatic compound. How you mean benzene and another? So, yeah. Give you some specificity for that. Okay. And then what we're trying to do now is start showing the image of sensor response as called heat map. Right. This is showcasing of the sensor response depending on ammonia, acetone, and the toluene and nitrogen dioxide, NO2. Everybody see a different color variation depending on it. So pixelating the image. And you can clearly see if I make a four by uh, three by four by four by three matrix, I have a different pattern showing up depending on how to take. And you can use them that technique to actually identify and quantify this. Okay, and then you can tune that with the right? Whether I do temperature at the lower to high, then the signal change, and from that signal, then you can actually send the information. So 
that's all the variety of the sensing material. Next thing is that you got to put that into the some device that you can actually detect every aspect. Okay. And again, it, it cannot be $1,000. Okay, no way. You got to reduce the cost. So what my team did was using the flat, you know, the one of the thing happened with the wearable device is that they like to make a flexible electronic now. Right, because now you want to use every aspect. Then what they develop is a flexible electronic. So we piggyback that. We make a design such way we can make 118, 60, uh, 60 to 118 and 20, 128 sensory system, which is a couple of the, a couple of cents you can manufacture. Okay. Once you have that, you got a position sensing material. Again, even though it seems like easy, but it's not. It's called inking and processing. That we develop, we have a two different techniques. So the positioning sensing material into the location that we want to the different device. And then next thing is you've got to test it. Again, we build an electronic device that we can control both temperature and the light exposure. But build this such way is less than hundred dollars. So here's the control electronic, custom built sensor. Sensor going underneath the picture that it can light and uh, the gas is exposed. High throughput testing means it don't test one, you test the multiple. This is showcasing, I think, 20 ish, where we control temperature light with the MAM sensor system. So, whenever analyze we have, we can actually expose the sensor screen to the data. Okay, and then we generate a gas file well, like your generation, much better than way. This is very analytical way of generating. Anyway, we do left that you train. So again, then the, the so far the work that my team has been working on the exposure study, and here's total typical target of analyte that we go after because the exposure study, not at older, that we know what the call, what the PPM level and concentration we want to go after. And then again, next thing is that once you train all the sensing material onto the this type of analyte, we do call machine learning process. Okay. So the feature, the basic process, we do all the testing, we do a feature selection based on feature selection that you actually feature selection response, you know, the different feature you can get out of it from the table. Using the data set, we do a deviation and do machine learning. And here's typical data set that we generate, student generate, depending on what sensing material, what analyze, you can start seeing there's a different feature coming out. From the side, then, Three different mechanisms commercially available. Uh, machine learning algorithm range from neural network, random forest, and the KDR neighborhood processing. Now we have enough data to process to identify one. And then if you do that, I'm not going to work with you again in using that say that if you're using the data set, now we have a mechanism of identifying, quantifying the target and concentration. Again, this needs to be continued reiterated and do better in a real setting. But at least in control matter, we start seeing, oh, we can do 99% accuracy of detection of the device. And there's a one certain process better than the algorithm. Um, okay, so last couple of minutes, I think I got five or a minute or so, is to showcase. Okay, this is what we've been working and again that. Unfortunately, current landscape of funding, they like to see translation component. That's how I talk to some of you. Okay, so then I have to come up with, okay, what can we do? So one of the projects that we got funded at Fish was called SmartWatch. So vision was that I like to make a watch. People can wear around and understand that they're cool. Not portable device, watch. Okay, so sure, they want to fund us. Yes, 18 months, turn around that. And then the, the goal was to pay the product at the end of 18 months. Okay, that's typical turnaround the engineer process that they want. They want to prototype by 18 months in the beginning. The concept that we saw is that, okay, now this is for smart watch for the fire. Okay, so as there are a lot of things now these days, people, if you look at your watch, right, smart watch, you can do a lot of physiological measurements, right? 
So you can, you know, the, your, uh, you know, blood sugar, uh, not the blood sugar, the oxygen level, your pulse rate, and other information coming in. So you can actually see the wall fighter, that is a wall fighter from that. So the content we had is that we like to actually showcase the integration of exposure of understanding to physiological condition of wall fighter into the one form factor so that they can actually control and understand so that the information can transmit it to uh, the centralized location so that the commander and other can actually see the exposure strategy. Okay. So to do that, you need to do actually electronic device. Prototype it again, as I point out, I'm a chemical engineer. I'm not electrical engineer, it's called PCP board design. So I was lucky enough to have a collaborator with the people. The prototype device had all the integration on it. But yes, if there was a bunch of grad students here, typically it goes out my own, you know, I will tell them, you know what, you don't have to know everything. You just have to know who to talk to. Okay. What that means is that, you know, I have a friend who are chemical electrical engineer. They can do this uh, very easily. But I'm very sure if I ask them to make a that nanomaterial, they're not able to do so. Like, again, I have, I just have to talk to Bruce. Bruce, can you do a test with the GT mass spec with the, my electronic device? I don't need to know. All right, it's the same kind of logic. Seems very complicated. To them, it's not. Something that to them is very hard to me is very easy. So you just have to come up with the right team. Okay, then, come on. This is what we deliver. This is a real watch that we actually deliver to them. Okay, watch format. And I'm assuming you guys are folks up or students. So how much do you think that costs actually raw material? -wise? Make build it. Yes. Draw the number, $10. Ah, $100. Okay, hundred bucks. Okay, let me see how I can play this video. So, guess what? Uh, where, I, where am I? Okay. Am I on that side now? I cannot go. Okay, here. So, we had opened it to have uh, the drone chief of staff, second in command, is it an urban day? Wow, commanders, I think it was understanding what the wolf fire's capabilities have been compromised. So I take a, a large number of different uh, formats, let's say biomarkers of biologically intrinsic processes of the fire, uh, gets me even aware of all the way out to their interaction with the environment. This project. So does it my resident? I was out there, so I have all the pretensions. I was out there, so I have all the pretensions. This is my lab. And then, so where I get some type of This is a show my lab. Fire mission. It's a show value. Uh, to the department of defense, but at the same time, taking advantage of tools and approaches that we're already developing for individualized assays and diagnostics for the general public. This is the environmental context. So that actually we pull up that fire device. Four commercially durable sensors in here. Custom sensor. A generator, it's going to play watches. We send all the data from all of these sensors, GeoWi-Fi, Bluetooth. So that's actually your public station in my I don't know how many control controlling was, yes. but so connected. Platform. This is where the light control gas you have to the So that was actually that it was very interesting for my exercise, although it was very difficult.
Oops, wrong page. So the thing that that what that actually excited me was that actually we are able to implement that all the way and showcase that we made our hardware. Actually, we dashboard it up all the way up and demonstrate the process. So this is what Bruce and I proposed. He and I, as what Bruce pointed out, we met together. You know, we through the workshop. We said, you know, what what can we do? And then Bruce can me give the idea. And said, no song. We gotta work on this. You no know, one health. Animal health is electric human and ecosystem. You know, to do that, they, you know, that impacting the human, you know, food supply, ecosystem, health, and environment. My our souls. Okay, we need to make the device. Okay. Oh, how are we gonna make the device? This is what we're gonna do. We show them this is a pathway we're moving forward. We have up to the stage number three. We are done. We have a device. We are capable of making electronic device. We can dashboard it out. We have a startup company who are willing to participate in phase two. We identify all the stakeholders. The goal of that current project is that choose a topic, which is AI, right? Make a hardware that actually can actually have uh, all the pump and the valve integration on it in portal format. And then actually have a create a app that actually based on the, the profile of the volatile AI agent. And this is where hoping that we are starting soon. That in nine months, we gotta show some gadget with the some software showing that when you explode, here's how it's gonna start. Okay. And then again, consist of multiple modules, right? So in the top, there will be air sampler with the pump and the bell integration in it. Bottom is sensor module, and the, uh, the middle section is sensor module. And the bottom will be actually control election with built in Wi Fi and kitchen. Although it seems like a very complicated, sound very difficult, um, you just need to know your people. So, this bottom is not difficult. <laughs> Something that computer science undergrad can do. It's not difficult. Okay, and then again, those are the kind of matrix that we want to show. Anyway, I'll hopefully. I give you some sense of what my team worked on it. And then I'm very looking forward to work with the Monel as a long-term partner. Because as an engineer, the only thing that we can do is dream and come up with some solution that I don't know what I'm solving. Right? And that by working with all of you, and I, I think I have a very fruitful discussion already that, you know, there are a lot of things we can do, but once I know what's the problem that you like to solve and what the engineering side that you like me, uh, my team to work on, I can bring up the team of effort so that we can protect the problem that's not easy to solve, but at least we have the right people to attack that problem. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, the, I mean, the EOS field has been around for a long time. A very long time. Has lots of problems. I mean, people are still using GCMS instead of, you know, the hard costs or critical infrastructure stuff. Yep. I'm I'm sort of curious if you think, right, uh, there's been a shift in the field to solve these these sort of long-standing problems in Enosis lately, or or what's the you know, is something changed recently or? So I I, I you know that's you know those who are not Enos has been there for a very long time. I think that was 1990. I think Nat Lewis is the one that who started. So it's more than 30 or so. So again, it depends technology depending on maturity of that system, right? And again, as we all know, all the sensing is not easy, it's very complex system, right? It's not controlled environment. So let me make that statement. Is it solve problem? No, it's not. Then NSF will not fund solve problem. There will be already a lot of company out there who are selling a product. So we don't see any Eno selling product yet. We see a lot of sensor. So if you ask me a uh, gas sensor field, has that changed? Yes. So now that's become a billion dollar industry of detecting exposure of that. Not you know, but individual, they are going to multi-sensor. It's a fact. So they are moving forward. So what has been changing last 20 years or so uh, is that there are three aspects that you can think of. Okay, 
2001 nanotechnology happened, so then now we have a better material, better sensing material. Uh, smartphone happened, so you have a better brain. Now, last thing happened in the last uh, 10 years is what? Data analytic, machine learning. So now you can attack the problem that was not possible to you. But as the biggest problem, the reason why can, we cannot digitize smell, I know the Monell vision is digitizing smell, is, is a very complex problem. Do we have a better tool than the 30 years ago? Yes. Is it much easier to address the problem? Yes. Is it still a daunting problem? Yes. But we do have opportunity. That's one of the reasons why NSF want to do this, whatever they decided, whether we got selected as a team or not. They're investing significant, what, five, uh, so a total of $5.6 million per team to do this, attack this problem, see whether you can you know, do that. So we are hoping that we are one of those teams to attack. And your participation will be very important. I mean, phase two, hopefully, we can expand the Monell contribution. And, Who's and I talked about it. How can we include everybody into that? So I, I was just going to ask this project that really is more of a sensor. I don't think anyone knows if you detect the signal, say Amy's room, and you detect the signal for, mm -hmm. um, for uh, something like for COVID or something. Right. Um, so the aim is to develop sensor specific. Or actually, molecules or is to have a wide variety of sensors. So, so I, great, uh, you can't, yeah, you can't I, 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 I have friends that would be taken to you. So, okay, okay, there's a two different aspects of answering that question, right? Um, uh, so fund the project, right, to advance the technology. So, the pathway I took was to start from eat lower hanging fruit that exposure study that we know how we can. Do it well with the initial matter. Next level of doing is what we are doing with the boost that a sensor detecting the southern Pacific analyte from the system, right? So if you do that multiple times and your platform does not change, then you can actually then make that as you know. The so that but the thing is that we need to train specifically yeah. build the system now, your advanced technology. So you it's all about training. It's like how we train the dog in mind. Yeah, because I think the Eno is one of the reasons Eno's industry has been expanded so much is it's not so much on the sensor side of things, it's on the on the problem with brain How do you get a different signal signal there? How do you have something that might be starting something that isn't actually known? Right. So so most important thing to me, I was talking to some of your colleagues is that. It's all about, as an engineer perspective, how to lower the cost so that we can have a lot of data. Yeah. How can I lower the cost such way, and how can I manufacture device such way consistently so that everybody can have it and upload the data set so that machine learning people can do all those training, take out all the data information now. Because to me, that's a, one of the big, biggest bottleneck is to do that so that there, everybody can have the like. Can you imagine that we made a gadget that we can send the electronic gadget that it can be going in every lab and do that process stuff? But it is first step was that it had to be sensitive, right? Well, the sense is one thing, but one of the things I find interesting in these technologies and the project I was doing on um, some was had a really sensitive or specific right um, analog, but then you get swamped with some of these gold. And some metal but, um, cartridge things that you're using um, won't be specific to a particular atom. Right. You've got something else in there that's right. going to cloud the background. So, how do you take that cloud out? That's right. That's why uh, the project I was working on, we were actually collecting or printing all of this right. specific outlet right. so that you could actually then target that specific outlet element, take out the backgrounds. Right. Which you know, so there can be part of innovation this play. Yeah. So again, I did not showcase the molecular influence as a methodology. That that can be actually innovative. So you know, there's another important thing say everybody worry about feedback. Yeah. And a lot of people are thinking of molecular influence as a sensing producer to do that. So 
giving you the answer to me, and what I what I have finding very difficult. So I I I create a project. I say I'm gonna do high throughput testing. The next thing is I want to have all the data done same way. Right? I want to expose many analyzers. I think so I have a general understanding how those things. Unfortunately, there's no literature data at any of those things to talk about it. Is there any general principle? Can I actually come up with it to do engineering device? There's no data. So what my group has been working on last year, so gather all those information. 30 different analyze exposure to different concentration of the different temperature and different lighting. Okay. We start building the data. But going back to your idea is that the platform that I developed that describe it does not have to down to that particular metal oxide ion. It can be anything, any process, any type of material. Again, it doesn't have to be always conductive. So I'm creating a device that's where we can do it to the metric metal sensor, so we can do capacitive based in the, so that when the dialect so what I'm trying to do is building that's one of the proposal work in that the task was not only resistive sensing. We do in kilometric sensing to the passive bending when the absorption, when the molecule that does not charge in the when they bind down to that thing, and you can actually interpret it. Another important thing about doing that that I decided not to show is that when you do impedance, impedance is spectroscopic, right? You can do frequency dependent method. And when you have frequency dependent, then another, you got another dimension, high dimensional data set. Then you measure a different frequency response for the analyte that discriminates the part. Because then if you do that, you could make discrimination yes. on the data, not on the Yes. Yeah. So the, the goal in that and at that conversion pro, uh, process is that there's a what Bruce is going to work on. We do testing GCMS, identify biomarker. We also cross training emails with the GCMS set. We have a collaborator from Colorado State who's going to infect the, you know, create a sample. So in my perspective, in my team was doing that three aspects. We do machine learning and active learning of the data set. We better make a better sensing material. And last one is the green geometric sensing on top, on top of the resistive sensing so that you get high dimensional data set. Because, uh, you know, to get for Enos work really well, you need to provide high dimensional data sets so that all those data can transmit to the you know the data scientists so they can discriminate that component. And then the, in my perspective engineer, I want to make a general platform that anybody can provide sensing material to my group. We test for them. And that's what we started now. We have a question in the chat. Oh wow. We have oh, somebody listening. <laughs> I did not expect that. Yes. The material sends the air humidity and the air flow. Material does not detect the air uh, the air flow. It's not a mass flow sensor. Okay, uh, does measure the humidity because humidity is as you gotta consider water vapor as an analog. You cannot treat them as a separate. So it's a water vapor is analog, and it does interact with the material absorption, desorption, kinetic, and decomp. And you can actually translate the information to that, and that become part of. Instead of not only doing DOC, you got to vary the how humidity concentration so that it's part of your data set. And the thing that I was talking today in the morning is that, and I want to have a completely different training data set of nodes, right? So that now we have a testing system also. Yes. Uh, uh, Dr. You show a lot of different types of sensors, so I don't know where to target this question, but I'm generally curious about the time resolution of this sensor. So like when we wash the analyte on and then stop delivering it, how what's your decay? Are you able to measure anything about the dynamics of the okay? So it's called response recovery time, critical time, depending on what we are looking at the feature. And then yeah, if you do analytical, yeah, it's called T90. So how much of re response time for 90 percent response? Okay. Uh, T90 is roughly around a minute or 10 tens of tens of seconds to a minute. But if you use a data analyst, you don't have to wait until that saturation. You can actually take a slope of the line in the beginning and using that feature to identify concentration. So there are a lot of stuff that you can do. So you can the goal for in my group is identify within the few seconds. Is it the same on the the other side of the 
recovery, yeah, yeah. respond and recovery is, is a correlated absorption decoupling thing. Yeah, so you don't wait until then reaching the saturation. So the mindset of a, what traditional analytical chemistry has to be changed in the Eno system that you got to treat the data in very dynamic way temporarily. So you don't wait until the calibration curve. Tiffany, you have other persons? Okay. Well, I have a good yeah. I guess related to what you just said, I mean, yeah. how many times could these sensors be reused, right? So when you show some of these uh -huh. uh, reading materials, yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what we've been doing so far is that we, that sensor chip has been in a statical year so far. One year. So, you know, it go through, so far it went to 30 different cycle. 30 different analyze, so it takes a week to do full diagnostic or full spectral testing. We have not replaced. So it is, at least I can tell you, continue monitoring for one year. But if we going after, so another thing to think through is that, is that good or bad? So that's something to think about depending on the case. Sometimes you want to make a disposable sensor. So biological sample, I think it's better to be a disposable instead of the continuous. In that case, then I might second again if we become material related. But the reason is that if you're high operation, they called rain growth, and then they change the central property. But if I if I know that this is going to dispose for sensor, then you might want then I lose the sensitivity, then I might want to fail. So but uh, all the responding you saw that has been here all. You know, continue exposure here and we do repeat testing. And then it's 20, you know, 365 day operation, and that's still considered uh, sensitive, and right? it's still response. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.